Hi, this is Pat Dignan from Image Arts. Um, I just did a video a little while back on um, changing colors in different colors in different color spaces, and um, it made me think of, of a situation here where you have a color that's say in lab or RGB co uh, color space that is significantly outside the CMYK gamut. In other words, if we go um, to view proof uh, proof colors or use command Y which essentially applies your CMYK uh, what, whatever you have set up as the CMYK profile it applies that over top of your of your uh, image kind of shows you a preview of if you were to convert that to CMYK um, all of a sudden your bright orange shirt turns not quite so bright so if we hit Command Y again and get back to uh, uh, lab color. You'll see that we get we get back to the to the bright bright orange. Say if uh, if this is a color, you know it's a it's a client aligned uh, assigned color. You know they want it to hit a certain mark, and you've very carefully adjusted your curves to make these uh, make the numbers come up here so that uh, that uh, so that you're getting the color that you expect to get. Um, but then you find out that well that color can't be reproduced in CMYK exactly. How am I going to make this look the best it can, and still come as close to that color as possible um, without making the picture look uh, like this, where it gets really flat and the color the highlights fill in yellow and that kind of thing? Well, there's some things you can do. Um, the first thing you want to work on is uh, you want to add a, uh, a layer of hue saturation and what that can do is especially if you uh, just uh, just select the colors that you're you're working on here uh, we'll go reds and then drag in here to kind of adjust that uh, range here of and uh, kind of open this up a little bit because that's a little bit uh, not not quite red not quite yellow it's, it's it's definitely orange and they don't have an orange drop down so um, what you can do is do things like drop the saturation down just very slightly with uh, make sure you've got the preview turned on until you you start to see the kind of color separation that you want to see and you can you can do things like lighten it up overall so that you're still staying close to that color perception wise um, but you don't uh, necessarily um, you you can't match it number for number, um, but you want it to give it the overall impression of that color. So you can adjust with the saturation, the lightness, and um, sometimes a little bit with the hue um, to you know go one step one way or the other. Um, but that's usually literally just like one or the other. Um, I think here if we go if we go up one, that helps uh, keep that. Uh, a little more bright orange look. Um, if you notice, we've we've lost the these highlights were turning yellow before. Now they're uh, now they're a little more consistent with a believable highlight of this color instead of uh, instead of like changing color to from being orange to really yellow. Um, so that helps quite a bit. Um, we'll say OK, and if we do the conversion, it's still changing the color, especially especially in the highlights and shadows but in the middle colors like in here it's not as bad it's it's hardly changing at all so that's that's a really good thing then the other thing you can do is when you go to convert the color to a profile instead of using if you go under image to mode and go just convert to CMYK it will convert to whatever your your uh, built-in color space for CMYK is but you have when you do this you have these extra options here where you can choose the change the method or what they call the intent with which it converts the, the color um, basically how does it build the curves to produce those colors in CMYK there's two two methods that are used probably more than anything else relative color metric probably should be your first try um, and if that's not giving you the results you want, you can try perceptual, which tends to flatten things out a little bit more. 
but does help kind of keep things looking consistent uh, over it. We, we lose some of the highlights, become a little flatter, and the shadows become a little more flat, uh, flatter, but at the same time, we don't see as big a color shift when we convert to CMYK there. Saturation um, keeps the saturation, the brightness of it, and but it does kind of look like maybe our, our shadows are turning a little more red here and our highlights are a little more yellow uh, by doing that, where yellow, our relative color metric, uh, we're, not, we're knocking back the saturation, but the, um, the highlights and the shadows are okay. Um, absolute color metric you never use at all. It's uh, really not, not something to be used for uh, real pictures. Um, I'm kind of liking Perceptual in this version the best. It produces the most uh, realistic uh, conversion of this. Um, you also have, at this point, uh, the, idea, the uh, chance to flatten the picture or not when you, con when you uh, convert it to CMYK, which is very important um, sometimes if you're, if you're working on a picture and you don't want to flatten all your, all your uh, layers together. Um, so we'll, we'll say OK. And there we go. We have uh, this orange shirt, which was um, way outside the CMYK gamut, converted to colors that are now inside the CMYK gamut, but much, much brighter than we possibly could have gotten by doing the work in CMYK. And we've converted it to colors that look the best they possibly can when converted to CMYK. So um, if you have any questions on that, Feel free to shoot me an email. My email address is pdignan at imagearts.online.com. Thanks.